Everyone knows that one friend who brags about their drinking skills, 10 beers, no problem. Shots all night, easy. People treat tolerance like a superpower. But tolerance doesn't mean safety. Today, we're getting into the real science behind alcohol and beer. Let's begin. Why we thought alcohol was healthy. Look, I get why people think alcohol might be good for you. I mean, we've been drinking this stuff for literally thousands of years. We're talking about wine jars in ancient Mesopotamia from 5,000 years ago. The Chinese were distilling alcohol way back in the first century. And here's the thing. Back then, alcohol wasn't just for getting drunk on weekends. It was like their version of hand sanitizer because it actually killed bacteria. So for most of human history, they treated it like medicine and food packed into one. Science seemed to back this cultural intuition. In the 1980s and 1990s, the French paradox captured global attention. Despite a diet heavy in butter, cheese, and meats, French populations reported lower rates of heart disease. Wine consumed daily with meals was credited as the main factor. But wait, it gets better. Scientists started noticing a pattern called the J-curve. Picture a graph. The bottom axis is drinks per day, and the side axis is your risk of dying. Heavy drinkers died earliest. No surprise there. But here's the weird part. People who didn't drink at all also seemed to die earlier than expected. And right in the middle, the moderate drinkers, just one or two a day, appeared to live the longest. You'd see headlines claiming a glass of wine was like an hour at the gym. Thousands of years of tradition, solid-looking science, and catchy headlines. No wonder everyone believed their daily drink was actually keeping them healthy. But here's where that pretty story completely falls apart. First, our ancestors using alcohol as medicine. Yeah, they needed it back then. Sketchy water, no antibiotics. But here's what they didn't know. Alcohol breaks down into acetaldehyde, which is literally toxic to your cells. Just because people survived using it doesn't mean it was good for them. The French paradox? Turns out the French had way more going for them than just wine. Better healthcare, different genetics, lifestyle factors. When scientists looked at other countries, they couldn't find this magical wine effect anywhere else. That famous J-curve, where moderate drinkers supposedly lived the longest. Turns out it had a big flaw. Many of the so-called non-drinkers in those studies were actually ex-drinkers who had quit because they were sick, which made the drinkers look healthier by comparison. On top of that, moderate drinkers were often wealthier and had better access to health care. Then came the massive global burden of disease study. They saw that one drink a day might improve heart health a bit, but it also turned up cancer risk, breast cancer, stomach cancer, the bad stuff. Add it all up and alcohol never comes out as a net positive. The U.S. even tried to run a gold standard experiment, the MACH trial. 8,000 people, six years. But it turned out the alcohol industry was secretly influencing the design and funding. When that came out, the whole project was shut down. Modern science is crystal clear. The so-called protective benefits were never real. There's no safe level of daily drinking. All right, let's break down what actually happens in your body when you drink. This is the science behind all those studies we just talked about. Alcohol is both water and fat soluble. That means it can get into every single cell in your body. There's basically nowhere it can't go. So you take a drink, and here's the process. Your liver breaks it down in two steps. First, it converts ethanol into acetaldehyde, and this is the problematic part. Acetaldehyde damages your DNA, breaks down proteins, and disrupts cell membranes. Then your liver converts that into acetate, which your body can use for energy. But it's completely empty calories. No vitamins, no minerals, nothing beneficial. Now, alcohol crosses your blood-brain barrier easily. Even one drink suppresses activity in your prefrontal cortex. That's the part that handles judgment and decision-making. Your brain literally can't process decisions the same way. Sleep gets affected too. Alcohol might help you fall asleep faster, but it disrupts your REM sleep, the stage where your brain consolidates memories and processes emotions. Your brain just can't properly store information. There's also what happens in your gut. Alcohol kills good bacteria and makes your gut leak toxins into your blood, which spreads inflammation through your body. Long-term brain imaging studies show that even one to two drinks a day are linked with measurable reductions in gray matter. That's basically your brain tissue shrinking. In men, alcohol increases the conversion of testosterone to estrogen. In women, it affects hormone levels and increases cancer risk, particularly breast cancer. The key point is, this happens with every drink, not just when someone gets drunk. All right. Let's talk about beer specifically, because I know a lot of you are thinking, Come on, beer is not that bad. It's way weaker than vodka or whiskey. Look, a beer does feel harmless. Light beer has around 100 calories. The heavier stuff can hit 250. Doesn't sound like much, but drink one every single night and those calories start adding up around your waistline. That's just how it works. 
Your liver is also working on it. Every sip, it's pumping out detox enzymes. And while it's busy processing alcohol, it stores more fat inside liver cells. Keep this pattern going and you can develop fatty liver disease. Even if you look healthy on the outside, here's the perspective shift. One beer a day doesn't sound like much, but that's over 2,500 drinks in a decade. Each one gets broken down into acetaldehyde, that toxic compound we talked about earlier. A year of daily beers might not look too bad, but over time, those small hits stack up. That's where the real damage builds. All right, that's the truth about alcohol and beer. Now, what you do with this information is completely up to you. If you want more straight-up science without the fluff, hit subscribe.